We're kicking that off today with Stuart Butterfield, the CEO of Slack. Stuart, great to see you. Thanks so much for, for joining us and kicking off this new segment for us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Um, there's so much to discuss uh, with you. And uh, the, the theme I wanted to start on was the journey you've kind of been on since your, your direct listing to now. And uh, obviously, as an early stage company, you're at that stage where your, your revenues are growing fast, but you're still uh, making, a, making a loss. And, and that was such a big theme for so many other IPOs last year. When you, when you saw some of the other ones fail, like WeWork, for example, did that make you tilt what you focus on, whether you focus now more on, on getting to profitability a little bit quicker versus revenue growth? And of course, your own share price has slipped a little bit since the direct listing. Yeah, so uh, I, the short answer is no. Um, they're very different businesses. We're, you know, we're a software business, 88% gross margins. And so uh, the mechanics of the business are, are pretty straightforward. And I think that most um, uh, institutional investors understand and appreciate that. Uh, I wish that we could spend a lot more, um, you know, if we found effective ways to spend to drive growth. Um, but I think we're, we're growing at about the rate that we're able, given, you know, office expansions for new sales teams and driving marketing programs, um, but very confident about the underlying dynamics of the business. And in terms of the process you use to, to come to market of a direct listing, clearly uh, that process happened and you chose it that way in part because you didn't need to do a big capital raise. How have you found the process of coming on places like this and, and the earnings call and, and the much more uh, quarterly focus on whether you have or haven't hit targets and, and with it the fact that the share price has come down a lot? Has it made you rethink whether that was the right time to list given that of course you didn't need to raise capital alongside it? Yeah well you, I mean you kind of got to make these decisions about six months in advance and so when we made that decision December uh, of 2018 things looked pretty rocky. Um, in the event, we opened into an all-time high for everything, um, and so be a pretty vigorous market. Um, but no, I, I, I'd say you're right. The reason we didn't uh, do a traditional IPO is because we had about $850 million in the balance sheet. Um, there was no reason to, to raise additional capital. We're still in a very strong cash position. Um, but you know, today, as a public company, valued about twice as highly as we were as a private company. So I think it's... Uh, Two earnings calls in. I think it's people are still forming an opinion, um, mm -hmm. trying to figure us out. I think you need uh, three, four, five earnings before they are able to understand the business.